Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. So I was getting a lot of messages uh, regarding the NEET PG 2024 plan and the most common questions like how one should start the preparation, how one should cover the 19 subjects in a limited time frame and regarding the GTs, the QBank and many more. So I thought of coming up with this video where I will be laying down a plan for you which I believe is a rightly balanced plan where you can cover the 19 subjects in the coming five months uh, and you can uh, finish your first reading by October and also plan your revision in advance. So without further delay, let's get started. So the 150 days plan that is from June to October, that is five months. Uh, this will be your first reading where uh, most important parts will be the videos, the Q bank, then the grand tests and the PYQ topics. Uh, we will be discussing in details regarding all of these and how to approach them. Now regarding the main videos, I would uh, suggest uh, using Marrow because I myself use that so I know much better about it. But you can uh, still use any of the source which you are using, uh, that doesn't matter in the long run. Uh, but if you are using Marrow, uh, I would suggest to buy the notes as well because uh, the time is the main constraint here. Making notes uh, on your own would be time consuming and uh, I would recommend watching the videos at 1.5x to twice x so that you can save time and uh, just follow the notes. And you can even use the intern mode in Marrow. That is a very wonderful feature in the app. As you can see the latest edition of the Marrow uh, for subject like surgery, as you can see there are 82 videos. But when you uh, switch on the intern mode, the videos are reduced to somewhere, uh, somewhere around 45, 50. And uh, they are replaced by the QBank modules. So you can even uh, solve the QBank modules, that's enough. But if you're not able to grab the concept, then it is recommended to watch the video. But you still, you can skip the video and just uh, solve the QBank because the way QBank is arranged, it covers the entire chapter. So you don't miss out on the topic. Nowadays, other platforms are also providing uh, hard copies for their uh, classes. Uh, and uh, it's highly recommended that you buy the notes uh, if you are using other platforms as well, because uh, that will definitely save a lot of time. For the QBank, you definitely have to solve about four to five modules each day. Uh, that would uh, amount to around 50 MCQs each day. You cannot skip that. Besides, uh, you know, watching videos and reading the notes, you should aim to solve at least 50 MCQs every day and slowly increasing it to at least 100 MCQs each day. So this entire 150 days, your flow should be watching the videos, uh, reading the notes, solving the QBank and repeat. That is how your preparation should go on. So before we discuss the plan, I want you all to have this list where you will be having the 19 subjects and the columns of videos, first read, Q bank, the previous question topics and the revision, number of revisions have done for this subject. So this will be really helpful uh, as a tracker of tracking your own progress as you go on to the first read. And I want you all to have this ready and stick it on your study board or the study table wherever you are studying and uh, keep ticking off uh, each columns once you are done with that particular subject. So this will be really helpful to track your own progress. Now there are two approach you can have for the first reading, one is a integrated and a smart approach and one is a subject wise approach. So I will be mainly discussing the integrated and the smart approach because I want you to uh, cover these subjects uh, in a limited time frame because time is the main constraint and uh, to cover all the subjects smartly so that you don't have to waste uh, undue time on each topic separately. And the subject wise approach here is where you finish one subject and you move on to the other subject and once you complete that subject again you move on to the other subject so that is a very basic approach but i want you to follow an integrated and a smart approach where you can cover the 19 subjects in a limited time frame so the most frequently asked question is which subject to start with you should always start with a short subject because that is easier to start and you have a sense of completion early in the phase of preparation and which is the best way to carry on so it is always a short subject along with a long subject where you can cover the basic sciences with the clinical subjects and so on that gives a strong background to the preparation now in the integrated and a smart approach i want you to divide these 19 subjects mainly in the two categories one is surgery allied subjects and one is medicine allied subjects and the subject which is common to both is radiology which covers both surgery and medicine now, what are the surgery allied subjects? So they are surgery, anatomy, OBGY, ENT, Optha, Ortho, Anesthesia and Pathology mainly the systems. And medicine allied subjects are the medicine, physio, pharma, patho, psychiatry, derma, PSM, pediatrics, micro, uh, anatomy, forensic and biochem. So as you can see, the surgery allied subjects are less and medicine allied subjects are more. So naturally, we are going to give more time to the medicine allied subjects and less time to surgery allied subjects. In this plan, we will be giving about 65 days to surgery allied subjects and about 80 days to the medicine allied subjects. 
and uh, four to five days for radiology. So that will add up about 150 days for your first reading. Now, once you are done with uh, dividing the subjects as surgery allied and medicine allied, so this is how surgery allied subjects look like, where you have surgery, anatomy, ortho, anesthesia, ENT, optha, ops and gynae and patho. So in surgery, again, there are subtopics like general surgery, then the abdominal part, the urology part, trauma, breast and so on and uh, the relevant anatomy. So I want you to cover the relevant anatomy along with the surgery. For example, when you are covering the abdomen, you should also read abdomen anatomy along with it. Then, for example, the pelvis where the male reproductive system and the female reproductive system. The male reproductive system will cover the urology part. So that is how you can go along with it. That will save much of your time. Then uh, orthopedics, when you cover orthopedics, I want you to study the anatomy, upper limb and lower limb along with it so that you don't have to give extra time to the anatomy separately. Similarly, when you study anesthesia, you can study the pharma drugs along with it. Then uh, ENT, relevant anatomy from head and neck can be covered. Similarly for ophthalmology. Then for obstetrics, you can uh, cover the embryology together that will help you grasp the concept better and your job of reading it will be done at one go. Then gynae along with the relevant anatomy that is the anatomy of female reproductive system from the pelvis part and pathology the system wise and lastly patho systems uh, where most of them can be covered under surgery and OBGY so that you don't have to study the same patho again and again you can cover the breast and the urology part and the abdomen part of the patho uh, along with the surgery and for OBGY especially the gynae subjects uh, about the cancers about the ovary etc along with the gynae so in this way i have given certain number of days uh, for these subjects for surgery i have given about 10 to 12 days and i have not given number to anatomy because we are covering it in ortho and uh, surgery and the relevant other subjects so that will be covered there itself for ortho which is a short subject around around six days similarly for anesthesia six days ent and optha around seven days uh, for obstetrics 9 days and for gynecology 9 days because they both need, separately need time and many questions are asked from them and for patho I have given about 3 to 4 days which can again be adjusted with the bigger subjects so if you add up it is around 60 days but I have given a total of 65 days uh, 5 days of buffer so that if your plan goes here and there in this way you can integrate your subjects and cover the surgery allied subjects in 65 days so how to start this so best way to start this is to start with a short subject as I already said in the initial part of the video so you can start with ortho or anesthesia then go on to start surgery where you can uh, where again you have parts like general abdomen urology etc then go again to a short subject like optha then a longer part obstetrics then again ENT then gynae and then ortho anesthesia whichever is left so this is how you can cover the surgery allied subjects moving forward to the medicine allied subject which is a bigger part so what you can do is you can either start it with the medicine led subjects and complete that or you can start with the surgery led subject and complete that. Uh, it is always better to complete one category so that the flow is maintained. Now for medicine led subject again this is a list of medicine led subjects uh, where medicine it's a huge subject in itself and it has various subtopics like recipe, renal, endo, CBS, CNS etc. So I'll discuss how to approach medicine particularly uh, but with medicine we will be studying the physio, pharma and pathology together and also the relevant anatomy when necessary. For medicine which includes the subtopics where physio, pharma and path is also included. I have given about 20 days. Uh, I'll tell you how. Then uh, for pathology, general and hematology I have given separately 4 days. Then for anatomy, the brain and the thorax which are left. I have given about 3 days uh, which will be covered again in the medicine, CNS and the CBS. Then for derma, I have given 5 days. For psychiatry, 4 days. For forensic which is again uh, can be divided in two parts one is general and the toxicology i have given three plus four that is around seven days uh, then for microbiology the general immunity microbes uh, microbes being the bacteria fungus and the virus so i have given about nine days uh, then for pediatrics uh, that is the neonate then the growth and development and then the system proper around seven to eight days then for biochem that is the carbohydrates protein fat and the genetics proper around nine to ten days and lastly the PSM where one part is the disease and the programs and the other part is the statistics. So that is about 10 days. So if you add it up it is around 80 days. Now moving forward the medicine how to cover the medicine. So medicine is basically a compilation of physiology, pathology and pharma. So you can easily cover all these three subjects together along with medicine. So it will save a lot of time and it will also help you build your concepts better. 
So you can divide the medicine into all these subtopics like CVS, Respi, Endo, Hemat, Renal, CNS, Rheumat, Infectious and GIT. So I have given uh, three days to CVS and CNS where you will be covering the physio, then the pathology, then relevant anatomy. Uh, for example, for CNS, you need the brain anatomy. For the CVS, you need the thorax anatomy. And uh, then you should study the medicine proper, the signs, symptoms, the clinical feature and the management. And then you can go and complete the pharmacology of the relevant topic. So if you see physio, pharma and path, all the subdivisions of these subjects are also similar to medicine. So you can keep covering those topics along with medicine. So for hematology and infection, I have not given any number because hemat I have separately given uh, two days along with pathology. And for infectious, you can cover this along with microbiology. For example, pharmacology, the uh, antimicrobials, you can study along with the microbiology that is a fungus, bacteria and virus that will save a lot of time. So the whole idea of integrating is to build a better concept save time, study smart and be exam ready. Because if you see the pattern of exams uh, over the years, it is mainly a clinical stem describing the situation of the patient and they tend to ask the basic sciences or even they can ask the subject proper. So it's always better to prepare in this integrated fashion. You can always go for subject wise approach, but I recommend this plan so that you cover over the bigger clinical subject and the basic sciences together itself. So uh, how to start the medicine allied subjects, so again uh, with a short subject, uh, I started my preparation with derma, so I wrote derma here, so you can go with derma or forensic, any short subject, then you can start the medicine proper, here also you can cover just two subtopics and then go again to the short subject, then again to the further two subtopics, then psychiatry, then again medicine, then pedia, biochem, micro and PSM. I wanted to cover pedia and biochem together because they are mostly related, especially the genetic disorders then microbiology and lastly the PSM because after you're done with the medicine proper uh, PSM is just about the programs for the diseases and any vaccines etc and the statistics part that is the study designs screening and certain numericals etc again while studying psychiatry you can cover the uh, antidepressants antipsychotic drugs from pharma along with it so that is how you can smartly arrange your plan and this is the flow which you can maintain and we have given about 80 days to this. So for surgery allied subjects, we have 65 days. For medicine allied subjects, we have 80 days. And for radiology, which is a combination of both surgery and medicine, I have kept five days. So that makes up around 150 days. Uh, and doing radiology at the end would be a cherry on the top because it will help you revise tips and bits of all the subjects together. Now, having discussed the plan, which covers the videos and the Q bank, grand test is one such thing which we cannot skip and you need to supplement your preparation with grand test and uh, I suggest to give three grand tests uh, per month from the initial phase of your preparation that is from June itself but uh, if you feel that is more demanding you can at least start with two grand tests per month once in every 15 days initially and then uh, from the revision phase you can increase the grand test for two three grand tests per month and reviewing a grand test is must if you cannot review the grand test it's better not to give and uh, you definitely have to make a GT copy alongside. What is GT copy? I have made a detailed video regarding GT copy. You can watch the video later. I'll put it up in the I button or in the description below. The GT copy will help you prepare a list of topics where you're making mistakes commonly and that will be very useful in the revision phase. Then the PYQ topics. Uh, so these are topics which you cannot afford to make mistakes and you cannot afford to skip these topics and revision also should be planned around them. So there's a list of this PYQ topics for all the 19 subjects. I will uh, pin down in the comment section. You can download them. And before starting every subject, you should have this PYQ topic list uh, alongside your table so that you can know which topics are the most important and frequently repeated. And you cannot afford to skip these topics. Now, planning the revision in advance. This is very important. When you're doing your first read, the ultimate aim is to plan your revision because you cannot revise cover to cover and that is where integration from the initial phase, the plan I have shared, will be helpful. And also if you keep on having few practices in the initial phase, it will definitely help you in the revision. So few things like marking the PYQ topics as I told, uh, having the list uh, alongside your table, then making a GT copy while reviewing, then Jainabura ma'am's BTR session. So Jainabura ma'am conducts a very beautiful uh, revision sessions every year. Before she used to conduct these on an academy. Now she's associated with Cerebrum Academy. And I would definitely recommend you to take this because uh, the beauty of these sessions is she teaches all the 19 subjects 
and she also integrate it very uh, beautifully she also covers the highly volatile and important stuffs all at one place so these sessions are going to be very helpful in your revision phase so i would definitely recommend you to take whenever this session starts then the pearls the pearl feature of mero is one of the best feature i love about mero and this is also free and you can easily revise the pearl uh, while you're traveling or while you're working it comprises of all the tables and the pictures and so many other important uh, information so pearls are very important coming to dams dbt so uh, students who are already following dams as their primary source uh, for them dams dbt is a must and it is very uh, useful also uh, for st other students uh, it depends if you are not following any other revision source you can definitely add dams dbt uh, to your revision source but if you already have other resources like the mams btr session or you are making your own copy uh, there is a 28 notebook or anything like that then you can skip dams dbt you should not have any fomo of missing it uh, then the mero revision videos and the mcq discussion so this is also when you have time you should go for it otherwise uh, you should mainly focus on your own notes uh, mero revision videos for short subjects i, I recommend uh, but for long subjects it's sometimes it's time consuming and mcq discussion videos is a good source for revision where the teacher solves the mcq for you and uh, you just have to sit and have a good revision then youtube revision series uh, again this is optional uh, when you have time there are many revision series on youtube which is free and many channel runs it so the first four points are the must which i would recommend for your revision plan and planning the revision in advance is very important now after discussing the entire plan how you should approach these five months to cover the first read and also how you should plan your revision in advance the main thing is how to stay consistent and this is so important uh, so these are certain points which help me to stay consistent during my preparation so i would like to share with you all number one is the pomodoro technique so this is a very lovely technique where you study for around 25 30 minutes you can give an extend to 45 minutes and then take a small break of 10 to 15 minutes and again repeat it and after repeating around three to four cycles you take a bigger break and then you get back to studies so whenever you are lost in a day and you feel like you have not started well in a day you can always use this tool of pomodoro technique you can quickly start your studies just put the timer on sit for a session take a small break and again repeat then quitting or limiting social media definitely you have to limit social media to avoid distractions you can stay connected to the study pages that is okay then keeping a track of your actions this is so important and that's why i shared a table initially in the video where i asked you to make a table and columns of all the 19 subjects and you can keep ticking off as you're completing small tasks of each subject you can also track your daily actions of what you have planned to study today and what you have completed i have made a video on this uh, you can check it out later then don't over plan and keep it simple uh, this i always say you should always under plan and over execute because when you over plan and you are not able to execute you always feel demotivated so lastly two three bad days don't worry bounce back because two to three bad days doesn't define your entire preparation so you shouldn't worry much about that so with this i hope guys this video was useful uh, this plan i hope it will help you to complete the first reading in the five months you can always customize accordingly and if you are someone who have not started the preparation yet I think this is the best time to start because you can't further delay the preparation so that you can plan your two revisions at least before the exam. This year exam is expected to be somewhere in January because they are trying to bring the schedule back on track. So the deadline which you should consider is January. So with this, I wish you all the best. Please comment down uh, if you have any doubts and you can also DM me in my Instagram account for any help. I will be happy to help. And also do let me know about your progress and you can also tag me uh, on your study accounts. I will be happy to reshare it. Till then, keep studying. Take care. Cheers.